So doing a blood draw is easy. And one of the ways you can make that easier is with appropriate prep. And that involves getting your kit ready before you go and see the patient. And I would argue that the very most important thing on the entire trail here is uh, the sharp spin. Without that, you are just not going to progress forwards. Without the sharp spin, you're putting your patient, your colleagues, and yourself at risk of a sharps injury. If you can't find a sharp spin, that's it. You don't progress forwards. Other things that we're going to need to make sure that we've got plenty of are alcohol wipes, because there's always the possibility that we miss, that we de-sterilize the site, or that we need to do another stab because for whatever reason, our first one hasn't worked. And it's very important that you are confident at doing a second, maybe potentially even a third stab, because the patient will willingly, not necessarily happily, but willingly allow you to take more blood. Why? Because it's for their care. Their blood is being taken to help them. So although it might be difficult for you to acknowledge that things haven't gone well, Try to think of that in the frame of view of the patient, that they need this blood test and that you're helping facilitate their care by doing so. So be prepared to have another go. With regard to that, I always make sure that I have excess of the vacutainers because I assure you there is nothing worse than fighting to get a patient's uh, blood vessel, finally getting there and then realizing that one of the blood vessels has gone a little bit too close to the skin and the vacutainer has um, depressurized, but then you don't have a spare and can't uh, carry on using uh, that vein because there's no, nobody nearby to give you that extra. So make sure you've always got spares with you. On the spares front, I also carry an extra tourniquet just in case one has the temerity to break on me. Final two things I've got, I've got the uh, plaster for once the bleeding has stopped, but I've got a large amount of woven swabs because I'm going to apply pressure initially and then make sure the patient applies that pressure because that's the best way to avoid a bruise where we've got that extra visation of blood under the skin. So once the kit's ready, we've got the gloves, we've got our butterfly, we've got our regular needle. So we're, we're covered with both eventualities. If we can easily find a vein or can't, we're ready to go and see the patient. So let's swap over. And I think it's time for me to sit in the hot seat. Come on. Okay, so my turn in the hot seat, as it were. We've got Megan doing the examination, but Megan's going to, well, run through the whole vein puncture as if we're doing that live on the ward. So, there you go. Um, hello, my name is Megan. I'm a medical student. Um, before we begin, can I confirm your name and date of birth, please? Yes, James Gill, 25th to 6th, 84. Thank you. Um, and are you on any anticoagulation at the I'm moment? Not. Okay. Um, I can see from your arm that there aren't any signs of infection or any cuts. Um, and so I like to have a look at the arm and see if there's any good blood vessels that are sort of poking out. Um, luckily, you seem to have quite good blood vessels to take blood from. <laughs> so I'm just going to alcohol at my hands. Um, and then just um, pop the tourniquet on, um, find a good blood vessel, and then wipe it um, with an alcohol wipe. there and then have a feel so I think this one's probably quite a good one to, to go for in the meantime whilst I'm wiping it and cleaning it I'm going to take the tourniquet off because we don't want that on to feel too long um, at this point so I'm going to wipe it in a cross hatch method for 30 seconds seconds later. Um, whilst that's driving, drying for 30 seconds, I like to um, put my gloves on and um, uh, prepare sort of um, everything for taking the blood test. I don't do that originally to start with because in order to feel where the blood vessel is, it can be quite difficult through gloves. Um, and so actually it's usually the message to the patient that I can feel the blood vessel in that way. This is where we take the needle, this is a um, butterfly needle, um, and I attach the 
vacuum to it. I'll also at this point get ready some gauze um, for when I take the needle out and get the plaster ready and open. At this point I also like to line up um, the containers which I'm going to take blood in, in the correct order so that I make sure that um, they're not going to be mixed up and I'm going to forget one and have to restart and do another one. Um, I also like to prepare um, a bit of cotton pad ready to um, put it over the, uh, the wound and potentially even open up the plaster um, a little bit to make it a bit easier. So that's all ready okay. and then I'd put the tourniquet back on. I tie this in such a way so it's quick release. All I have to do is pull this one to release it. Okay. So as we're going in, the bevel is pointing down, so we're not going to have any problems scratching the top of the blood vessel as it goes in, which means Megan can wiggle around a little bit without any problems. Okay. And sharp scratch. I just see a flashback there. So I hold it in place. One. And I take this off for the penultimate one, not on the penultimate one. There we go. And then you ask the patient if they could very kindly hold, hold it down. Um, unfortunately, you can't do this on patients that are untrustworthy. Um, and make sure that you put the um, sh uh, needles in the sharp spin afterwards. Um, make sure to invert the bottles five times um, so that all the components in the blood tubes get mixed with the blood. So with regard to that, um, he says taking his, uh, the pressure off, um, you'll actually see on the, uh, the gold top bottle that the blood has actually clotted. This is supposed to happen um, in this uh, bottle, so that's fine. Um, it is very, I, I might make sure I tell all the patients to press as long and hard as they can on the wound because that will prevent that extra versation of blood under the skin and prevents the bruising. Basically, it moves the impetus uh, to get it right from me onto them. But that was a fantastic blood draw. Um, I would normally finish with any other questions, but this is the wrong way around. So. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> right, well, thank you for joining us for that. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, now that Megan's clearly leading the show, <laughs> drop them in the comments and uh, I'll let uh, Megan answer them. <laughs> okay, thanks. We'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.